ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وهو حبيبنا وامامنا فنصلي ونسلم عليه على الدوام ونصلي على ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى اصحابه بجهدهم وتضحيتهم قام هذا الدين فرضي الله عنهم اجمعين Last week we were talking about taking a position with regard to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we were saying that in surah al-bayna that the scenario was becoming very clear that everyone and the Meccan and Medinan society had to decide what was their relationship to the Prophet ﷺ. Once that became clear, then everything else became clear. Who Allah is, the reality of the Quran, the changes that Allah wa were calling for. And we talked about the issue of intention specifically the hadith of intention and we know that the scholars they differ over some of the asbab al wurud the meaning uh, why was that the hadith was said but we took the opinion that the hadith was mentioned by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as an advice to that sahabi that made hijra and he didn't make that hijra for the sake of joining the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he made the intention to marry something that's halal but we use that as a way to combine between the issue of tawhid and ikhlas and the reality of the hijra itself just as a way to gather up a lot of different topics really fast because we just started the new hijri calendar and so there's been a lot of mention with regard to what is the meaning of hijra and so on and so forth Before going into the topic today which we're going to talk about the issue of ikhlas and we're going to talk about the issue of the human nature and we're going to talk about the issue of tarbiyah and the community I wanted to say that my responsibility is first of all to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala before it's to anyone So the challenge that I have in this position is to make sure that I'm addressing the needs of the community and the needs of the people and when my job is done my job is done when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala calls me to finish Allah tabarak wa ta'ala calls me to finish yani ana lazim ana kun sadiq min nafsi ashan al mutatalibat kathira وكل واحد له وجهه النظر everyone has their own opinion as to how things should operate and how things should go one of the most important things that we have to understand when we talk about a risal and nabawiya prophethood itself is that the prophet did something that is extremely difficult he began with his family it's extremely difficult because at the same time that he began the dawah with his family it was his family that was cause of the problem yani if i'm not correct in that correct it was his uncles some of the one they were kibar al qaum alladhina yani qamu didda they were the ones that were the ones that were against the prophet from within his own family alayhi salatu wasalam and he began with the people in his family and others outside of his family 
that the community itself they looked at that situation and how lay last ليس لديه مكانة يعني بتحقير عين تحقير that's how they looked at the Sahaba in the early time يعني عبيد وفقراء والناس دعفاء how lay كان الناس الذين كانوا استجابوا الدعوة الدعفاء أمام الناس والأقوياء أمام الله the ones who took the position to believe in the Prophet وسلم, and to be his Ansar before there was Ansar in Medina were the weak, were the poor, were the despised, were the slaves of the society. And there was part of his family that assisted and part of his family that resisted. And that resistance wasn't just a resistance of we don't agree with you. That was a resistance that ended up in the issue of torture, boycotting, murder, all kind of stuff like that. Using all of their resources to block the da'wah from emerging. So if we look at the Prophet ﷺ, the first thing that he began with was his family. And we know, yani min maqasid al-shari'a hifd al-nasr, or hifd al-usra. Or hifd al nasab This is from the goals of the Sharia to preserve the family itself. But the maqasid of the Sharia or the aims of the Sharia, all of the rulings of the Sharia people is not just to preserve, it's not just to be conservative, it's not just to protect ourselves. The deen is there not just to protect ourselves from the world, the deen is there to help us develop. Yani lin numu. That's the reality of civilization. So when we look at the family, the family is not just the issue of how can we preserve our family, but how can we develop our family? And then the issue comes, how can we develop the individuals in our family? After all, if we talk about the preservation of the ummah, then we're talking about the preservation of the family. And there's no way to deal with that issue. And we mentioned this before, and we mention it again, and we'll continue to mention it until Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala decides that it's no longer the time. That we can't talk about the preservation of our youth and the preservation of our family without actually addressing the issues as they are. We can't run from that and then expect someone to come into the community and save the youth. That's not going to work like that. We're not talking to you, Yani Mujarrid al Kalam. I myself had the same experience. I grew up in North Philadelphia. And I mentioned this before. I grew up in North Philadelphia in the 80s when the drugs were coming all in the environment. My family was one of those families. What do we do? How do we deal with this? And I mentioned it before. My grandmother was one of those that used to go to all of the janais in the community. And the community used to come to our house crying. My son died. My son was killed. This, that, so on and so forth. We lived that reality and we chose Islam and it wasn't that we didn't come from a good background. Yani, part of the issue that we have is we say we're Muslim and they're not Muslim so the problem is those over there. That's not the reality. These are social problems. So when we look at the reality even of Mecca in the time of Jahiliyyah they had social problems on every front. Yani men aina bada al islah from where did it begin yani bada min dakhil al usra it began from within the family itself the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was commanded by allah tabarak wa ta'ala fa aqim wajhaka lid din hanifa fitrat allah allati fatara an nas alayha allah tabarak wa ta'ala he commanded the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam here we don't take the issue literally but your whole being turn your whole self to the deen that was known the deen of fitra deen al hanif the deen of ibrahim والسلام, which is to believe in tawheed which is to engage in certain acts of ibadah to allah wa ta'ala and we know what ibrahim did 
we know the struggle that Ibrahim والسلام, had within his own family in order to establish the values of the deen so that the people are not in superstition or the people are not in violation of Tawheed itself. Ibrahim والسلام, when he couldn't with his family, he had to go somewhere else. And unfortunately, this is what happens. We have to go somewhere else. This is the state and this is the position of the du'at everywhere. When we want Islah, when we want to bring the good for the community, when we want love for the community, then we're obligated at a certain point to make hijrah. Because at a certain point, يعني نحن matrut. And that was the reality of the Prophet Muhammad We're talking about human beings engaging in trying to better the conditions of the people themselves. We're not talking about malaika. The only thing that differentiates the Prophet ﷺ from us is the issue of Hifdullah Wal Isma Min Allah But they're human beings So if they're human beings that means that this what the path that they took is easy for us to take but we have to understand it The way is not just formalities It's not just what we see appearances يعني هذا يحتاج منا تغيير في الداخل هذا يحتاج منا تغيير في في الأسر تغيير في القلوب تغيير في الثقافة والناس الذين ليسوا على هذا then they don't want change that's the reality at the end of the day this requires of us a change within our families a change within our hearts a change within our culture we keep saying that why because يعني يوم بعد يوم يزداد المشاكل and then we don't know how to deal with it. So the first thing here, the ulama they say when it comes to this ayah and this part, and you know what? You have fus and ayah Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. You don't have to come to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala perfect. Yani, and we mentioned this before, from the erroneous understandings in aqidah, from the mistakes that we have in aqidah, even at the level of the issue of khushu'ah, we have some of the youth believing that if they don't have khushu'ah and salah, that their salah is batil. I've encountered youth in the community that tell me, well, I'm not going to pray. Well, why are you going to pray? I don't have khushur, so my salah doesn't count. Yani had and now in ta'leem. Yani you make my job more difficult. You know what I'm saying? Because that means now I have to convince that youth that that idea, the idea that's so beautiful of khushur, it wasn't understood properly. Then we have to go to the issue. Well, it was your teacher that taught you that. That's erroneous. That's an erroneous understanding. So we have that type of problem. Then we have the problem that if a youth or an adult commits a sin, I'm a kafir. Murtakibil kabair, yani fi ba'd the nas, you fakirum kufar. They believe that they're kufar because they fell into major sins. A da'wa laysa yani at tariq is them. That's the issue that we have to understand. Nahnu lasna fi dawla islamiyya. Wa nahnu lasna mahkama. You know, so our approach is not the approach of judges. Now our approach is not to judge this person and that person. Our approach, you know, is to support and encourage. We see the people is like a marathon people. But we're doing it together. We're encouraging people together. That marathon is trying to maintain our deen and grow as Muslims and build our community and get to Jannah. So that we go into the grave, we went into the grave as believers. So the يعني الأسلوب لازم يتغير يعني أسلوب الخطاب the way that we speak has to change and we hear that over and over again I give you an example the other day we had a janazah here and the janazah was composed of Muslims and non-Muslims of course the, this is a masjid of da'wah right we agree with that is a masjid of da'wah ونحن نفتح الباب للناس وَلَوْ نَفْتَحَ الْبَابِ لَلنَّاسِ فِي بَعْدِ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ وَهُمْ غَيْرِ مُسْلِمِينَ That's just the reality. If the masjid is a masjid of da'wah, people are going to come in that are not Muslims. How do we deal with them? Do the first. You have to wear hijab. You have to do. We meet them with that. So they came in for Salat al-Janazah. Some people started to complain about the way that the women were dressed, this, that, so on and so forth. هَذَا لَا يَنْفَعَ They're not Muslims. Yes, they're in our space, they're not in the musalla. You see what I'm saying? So if we want to build the community, 
if we actually want to build the community, if we want to preserve our families, if we want to extend the dawah, then we're the ones that have to change. When we change, and when we build, and when we come together, the whole of the dunya will open up for us. Just like it opened up for the Sahaba. That's just the reality at the end of the day. So the ayah says, Fitratullah fatra nas In other words, your nature itself, you as being a human being, there's no way that you're going to find any happiness, any contentment, any sense of peace without the first part of the ayah. Without turning to the deen, that's not going to happen. Because the nature that we have is a nature that takes us to Allah. Right? It's a nature which takes us to Allah. This is one of the reasons why we have the hadith from Abu Huraira. No child is born, but that child is born on fitrah. His parents make him a Jew or a Christian or a Majus. As an animal delivers a child with limbs intact, do you detect any flaw? Now, Abu Huraira, he recited the ayah, the ayah of the fitrah that we just quoted, even to the extent that some of them, like Imam Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, he said that they were of the opinion that all of the children, whether their parents were Muslim or not Muslim, if they died and you heard them scream, that they were buried as Muslims. That's how the Muslims looked at the human being. They looked at the fitrah of the human being, yani al-asl, fil insan al-islam. So then when we find this issue, here we, the hadith teaches us something very important. Min aina badat al-mushkila. From where does the problem begin? From within the house. The hadith is saying that it's the parents that change the fitrah of the human being. Is it possible now for Muslim parents to give their children bad tarbiyah? Yes, it's very possible. Because if they didn't understand themselves how to address their children, if they themselves didn't understand how to educate their children, they, it's not an issue of naqt, it's the issue of understanding where we're at. They did their best. Then we have to be a niya. We don't judge the people on their intentions. So then when we come back to the issue, we have a lot of statistics and a lot of data. For anybody that wants to see the proof, mental health issues, drug issues, confidence issues, all that, it begins when there's a breakdown in the family. It begins where? When there's a breakdown in the family. Now, is it possible for the family to be a righteous family and the children still go against the reality of the deen? Yes. We saw that in the house of Yaqub and we mentioned that, especially for those parents, والسلام, those parents that they struggle and that they try their best and then they find that their children go another direction. We said, yes, that's possible. If you put your effort in, it's possible that your children will go in the wrong direction. Now, what am I asking here? I'm asking that if we're going to understand what we need, not what we think we want, what we need, studied from the bottom up, not studied from our minds, imposed, but what we need. We need to have an understanding of what we need as individuals. And the first need is, يعني, كل واحد كما قلنا في الخطبة السابقة لازم من يكون صادق من نفسه صادق ما الله تبارك وتعالى لازم يراجع قلبه ما الله تبارك وتعالى Everyone has to be in that position that you're truthful with yourself and you have a relationship with Allah that's truthful. It doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be a relationship in which you're having a clear, clear investment in it. Why? Because that's what's going to hold you when life becomes difficult. When life becomes difficult and you can't go to this person or that person for assistance, you know that you have a law. When your life is at a point where you feel so under pressure, then yani tafta bab al qalb du'a wa Allah. You're able to scream to Allah Taala, not literally, but you're able to cry to Allah Taala and have that as a release. 
But dua is not enough. The second thing is the relationship to the masjid itself. We have after COVID a situation throughout all of the country when nobody comes to the masjid. And then the other issue that comes is that what is our suluk? Yani man, who was suluk in nas? Bainahum, ba'duhum, ba'd. Because we won't be able to maintain the community if there's no relationship between the people, that's correct, right? If some people are just coming around, they're criticizing this, they're mentioning this negative. Who wants to be in that environment? Yani hadha min amrad al Yani an nadrat ila ila nas bi su al dawam hadha min amrad al if we don't see the people in a while, we should look at them in the best of manners. Even if we see them every day, we should look at them in the best of manners and speak of, to them in the best of manners. And then the other issue is our economy and our families. If our economy and our families is not on point, there's no way that we have a stable community. And we see that the Prophet wasallam, those were the lessons that went from hijrah. The first thing when they were in Mecca, they tried to live in that environment and they tried to correct their situation. When the, com when the environment no longer allowed them to be able to function on any level, on every level, ruhaniyan, iqtisadiyan, ijtima'iyan, spiritually, economically, socially, then they had to leave. Then they had to go. And then the first thing that happened when they made that hijrah, we mentioned this before. We ended the khutbah with that reality. أول شيء كان يفعل النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام كان ينظم الناس وينتبه على أحوالهم قبل أن أن ينتبه على مباني. Before he built the masjid, he organized the community because he had a social problem on his hands. عليه الصلاة والسلام. He had the muhajirin that came. They didn't have housing. They didn't have jobs or economy so the first thing that he did was he made sure that they had housing he made sure that they were paired up that's social services people that's welfare people that's economy people that's understanding how to organize your community people then they built the masjid and when they built the masjid they built the masjid with a purpose and that purpose was to build that community on the dhikr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala وبعد ذلك بدأت المشاكل على مستوى أخرى. Different problems came up, but the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام and his leadership, he didn't leave the affairs to the people to just destroy themselves. He didn't leave the conditions and the needs of the people unaddressed. He was the type of leader that addressed the people. وكان يصاحب الناس لم يحكم من الفوق. كان يصاحب الناس عليه الصلاة والسلام. He used to walk with the people and know their situations and know their conditions. And they felt that they were the most important thing when he addressed them. That's how we should be with the people. That when we deal with them, the people that we deal with, our Muslim brothers and our Muslim sisters and our family members, and even those that we deal with in the workplace, that they feel that they have dignity. Not that they feel that they have no dignity. That they feel that they're important. Yani هذا هو عين السنة. Yani هذا هو مقصد السنة. ليرضد بين الناس. Yani that's the, that's the goal of the sunnah to bring the people together. To bring their hearts together. To come back to the fitrah. Which and the fitrah of the human being or the nature of the human being is for us to be in good relations with one another. Who wants to live in a family where they're miserable? Who wants to live in a community where they're miserable? Who wants to be in a job where they're miserable? Who wants to come to become a Muslim into a community and that community is miserable? اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد وي اسك الله تبارك وتعالى تو فورجيف اس اور سينز وي اسك الله تبارك وتعالى تو جوين اور هارتس توجذر وي اسك الله تبارك وتعالى تو ميك اس اف ون فيجن 
We ask Allah wa ta'ala to guide us and to protect this community and to bring about the best in it in our families. Allah wa ta'ala, we ask you for them. We ask you for those who are struggling in their businesses or with their jobs. We ask you for our youth, Allah wa ta'ala, to protect them and guide them and to give them a sense of direction and strength. And we ask you, Allah wa ta'ala, for those that are, have died. And we ask you for protection from any sickness that runs through the land. And we ask you, Allah wa ta'ala, for those who have passed away that you change their bad deeds into good deeds. And we ask you, Allah wa ta'ala, to allow us to die in the state of Islam.